Hello, hello, hello. So I am back, obviously, with another video. We will be sticking with the true crime trend that is currently going to be happening on this channel. So if you don't like that, I'm sorry. Um, I will see you later. Hopefully, maybe I'll have other ideas coming. As of right now, I don't. This is all I'll be doing um, because I can't actually hang out with people. So I just have to do something or it's just myself. Yes, so I'm still here in my art room. Wow, it's very nice. Hopefully you can see me. I actually cannot see myself. I have no idea what is being filmed right now. Hopefully it's all working out good. So I chose this video. Um, it's actually a really interesting one that I had never heard about before. You think I would have because I actually live very close to the area that it happened in. So I don't know. But get ready, get seated. This one is a wild ride. So I'm just gonna start this with a little disclaimer that I don't mean to come off as insensitive um, about any of the crimes that I talk about. This is all just information that I found and I've thrown into a video um, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. So let's begin. So this case happened in Edmonton, Alberta, which is um, pretty close to where I live. It's just a few hours away. Um, and we are going to be focusing on Mark Andrew Twitchell. So he was born on July the 4th of 1979. Yes. Yeah, 1979 in Edmonton, <coughs> in Edmonton, Alberta. Jesus. He is a Canadian filmmaker and an artist. And he had this big dream of making blockbuster films. And he actually directed some of his own, I guess he would, they would be called like fanfic films. Um, so the one was called Star Wars Secrets of the Rebellion. That came out in 2007. He also scripted a comedy, I think called Day Players. And um, in September of 2008, he started making a horror film called House of Cards. He made this like in a garage that he had rented out in Edmonton, Alberta, which is in Canada. I don't know. I guess some people might not know that. So Edmonton, Alberta is in Canada, just in case there's, you know, people not from Canada that are ever going to see this. So now we're going to switch and just focus on someone else for a second. So there is this man called Giles Gillies. I'm just, just give me one second. I'm just going to figure out like actually how to say his name. Okay, I'm still not sure if I'm gonna get this right, so I'm really sorry. The video I watched said his name is Gius Tetro, so that's what we're gonna go with. Anyways, Gius was online on a very popular dating app, uh, Plenty Fish, I'm sure many of us have heard of it, where he started talking to a woman, Sheena. So Sheena messages him and is like, hey, why don't we meet up? He's like, hell yeah, let's do this. That's not actually probably how it went down, sorry. That is just my interpretation of the events. Anyways, so the Sheena sends him directions to a location. No address, which first of all, I just want to say is sketchy already. Gius goes to this location, follows the directions, gets there. It's a garage. Um, and so from what it seems, I'll show a picture of the garage. But it said that the door was partly open, like the garage door was only like partly lifted up. And so he entered the garage, like walked under this partly open door into the start garage, which I just, I feel like is already a bad idea. Like if you're going on a date with someone, you're meeting somebody for the first time and you have to walk into this like sketchy garage it's probably not going to end well. It's just a thought. I wouldn't do it. Um, yeah, it just seems like it's not going to be a good time. I don't know. But no judgment here. <sighs> so basically, he enters this garage and feels somebody grab him by the back. And then all of a sudden, he starts getting like tasered by a stun gun. So he looks behind him and there's a person wearing this like mask. It's a creepy, I'll show a picture. It's just this really creepy like Nacho Libre kind of mask. I don't know. This man that had the sun gun um, 
pulls out a gun and points it at Gius and is like, hey, get on the ground. Um, the man puts duct tape over his eyes and lays him on the ground. And so Gius is on the ground, eyes taped over, and he decides, you know what, like if I'm going out, I'm gonna go out with a fight. So he gets up, rips the tape off his eyes, and then grabs the gun from the attacker, and it turns out it's made of plastic. And I'm just gonna insert a clip right here of what kind of happened next. It's just a video of Gius talking about what happened. He must have grabbed me, and um, we started struggling. Oh, and I'm guessing during this, that's when I'm like, okay, I gotta try to fight. And that's something I missed, or actually. I tried punching him too, but I was so weak. And I'm, I remember thinking, trying to punch him, and I know I can't hit this mask because that's gonna hurt my hands. So I'm trying to punch him in his chest. And I'm thinking, man, why am I so weak? And my punches are, I feel like I'm not doing anything. And it's like, my punches are so weak. And then, uh, so I realized, okay, I'm punching him, I'm not gonna do anything. He's way bigger than me, and I, I'm not, can't do anything. So then I started uh, trying to kick him in the The whole thing, this is what I'm thinking. While I'm doing this, this guy, he had, if he was more professional, he could have killed me right away. Like right when I walked in, I didn't see him. He could have hit me over the head with a, a, a bat, a, a baton or anything. Yeah. He could have knocked me unconscious right away. And I, I don't know why he did that. His whole plan was to use this taser thing on me first. And I was stupid on his part. But he had many chances to kill me, he never did. So he had a, that's why I thought afterward all this happened, he had a bigger plan for me. I thought he maybe he was gonna t handcuff me and take me somewhere and do something. I'm facing this way, he pulls the gun out again. And for some, I think, cause I, I grabbed the gun, somehow we maneuvered, we were um, struggling again. And I'm trying to break the gun, right? So we're struggling and somehow I ended up this way again, struggling with this gun. And he's here back at the door, okay? So, because I just remember the door being there. And then I'm just trying to rip, break this gun, because this is, <laughs> I know it's plastic, and I know if I, what's he doing? He, he's yelling at me, because he doesn't want me touching his gun. And so, then, uh, I wouldn't let go, obviously, but, and I had a hold of his arm, his other arm, just in case he tried to punch me in the left, but he never did. And so, we're just struggling, I'm just, it, it, you could tell it's just weird that because he if he was a real gun he would have fired it or whatnot he never did he had nothing and he didn't he he never just wasn't professional it was just like it was maybe his first time that's how i thought of it so after the struggle he did manage to escape the garage and this attack was never reported to the police after he said that he felt embarrassed about what happened and so it wasn't until later that all of this information came out so because this was never reported to the police obviously twitchell was never taken in like nothing happened so he was just kind of free to try again and see what happened so again mark twitchell was online you know posing as the sheena girl trying to lure men into his creepy garage um, and he started chatting with a john brian Altinger. I just apologize, I really should have figured out how to say these people's names before I started this, but this is where we're at, um, and we're just gonna keep on trekking through. I have his name is Johnny in quotation, so we're just gonna refer to, him, refer to him as Johnny, and it'll just be nice and easy. So Johnny was 38 years old and worked in the oil field as a equipment manufacturer. So Johnny kind of took a smarter approach. He decided um, before meeting up with this girl that he'd been chatting to that he would tell his friends. So he did that on the 10th of October. He just let them know that he'd been chatting to this woman on Plenty of Fish and that they were probably gonna meet. So that was on October 10th. Fast forward to October 13th, Johnny's friends received these emails from him where Johnny was claiming that he met this woman and they fell in love and they were gonna go on a trip to Costa Rica just out of the blue. He sent his work a resignation letter, but in this resignation letter, there was no actual request to um, receive his final paycheck, which again seems a little sketchy, a little off. So obviously like Johnny's friends are picking up that something is not right. 
um, it, this is really strange behavior. And so they end up breaking it to his condominium where they find like dirty dishes, his passport, pretty much all of his belongings in there. And there was absolutely no indication that he had packed for this like trip to Costa Rica. So because of all this, they decided, hey, we're going to the police. They did that and police launched a homicide investigation. Johnny actually did also forward the location of where he was meeting the Sheena to his friends before he went. Obviously this location led to Mark Twitchell. Police bring him in and start interviewing him. And Mark Twitchell tells the story about how he bought Johnny's car off of him right before he decided to go to Costa Rica. And he bought like Johnny's car off of him for $40. And police are hearing this story and are like, this just doesn't seem right. Like it just, it's not a good story. It's not believable. Who's gonna believe that? So police obviously aren't believing him. They decide to seize his items. And in all the stuff that they seize, they find this laptop. So they're going through the laptop and they find a document that he had written called SK Confessions, which stands for Serial Killer Confessions. I'm just gonna read like the beginning of the document for you guys. So it said, this story is based on true events. The names and events were altered slightly to protect the guilty. This is the story of my progression into becoming a serial killer. Which is just, it's weird. It's messed up. Like, I don't know. I don't know. So police are reading this and these confessions talk about two people. They talk about somebody who had gotten away from this killer and somebody who was murdered. This, so police are like, okay, so if this is true, who is this other man? Who is this person that got away? Because no one had reported anything to the police. So police like put out into the news, trying requesting like, hey, if, if anyone was attacked by somebody to like come forward. So police put out a plea trying to find this first person. And that's how Gillis came forward with his story. And so the second story on the laptop is also very, specific it talks about you know a man luring someone into a garage murdering them and dismembering their body like it's very specific so police are assuming this is probably what happened to johnny so twitchell on the 23rd of october sends an email out to his friends and film crew just asking them not to speak to police at all and then on the 31st of october he is arrested so police like seize all of his stuff, obviously, to start searching through things. They go through his car where they find blood in the trunk, um, as well as items that belong to Johnny. They also found a knife in his car and a mask. What they believe is that Johnny was lured to this garage um, where he entered. And as he entered the garage, Twitchell hit him over the head with a pipe and then shortly after was stabbed to death. They also found blood on the floor everywhere, on a table that was in the garage, and it's believed that Twitchell dismembered and then burned the body of Johnny. So they found a barrel, like a big metal barrel, um, and then in the grass outside was a burn mark so they believe that this is what happened, but it took them two years to even find his remains. During his trial, he did admit to killing Johnny, but he said that he acted in self-defense, which again, I don't know, I'm starting to see this trend where people come up with just the dumbest excuses ever. Like, how can you pretend to be someone online and then lure them somewhere and then say that you killed them? Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I just feel like if you're gonna do this and don't do this, but if you're gonna, maybe you should think about what what your alibi is gonna be, like what the excuse is gonna be, because all of these have sucked so far. I mean, we're only two in, but I don't know. I'm not saying that anyone should do this. Like, I think if this is your plan in life, you should really maybe go see a counselor, talk to somebody about your feelings, and then rethink and reevaluate really what you're gonna do because it just seems like the worst decision like can we start making better decisions anyways
He did describe that the document that they'd found, the serial killer confessions, was fiction, but it was based on fact. And so it's believed that he, he actually started killing people in order to like craft a super compelling, believable story for this playwright that he was doing. This story is actually also really big because it said that he got his idea from watching the movie Dexter. Sorry, not movie, TV show. The TV show Dexter. I think this has been referred to as the Dexter killings because that's where he got this plan. He was like, hey, I want to write like a super cool movie or TV show. I'm going to kill someone, know what it's like, and then I'll like make a super believable document. Which again, you should go to counseling. So obviously the trial happened and Mark Twitchell was found guilty of first degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison. Yeah. And that is that. I don't know. This is just wild. I also don't know how I never heard about this. I was pretty young in 2008, but I've never heard of this one. This one is wild. And super sad. I mean, thankfully he only murdered one person. Like at least the first guy got away, but still, it's fucked. But yeah, that is the case of the Dexter killer, Mark Twitchell, who will never make videos. So there, he just threw, he just threw his dreams and aspirations away for literally nothing. It's so weird. But that is it. Um, stay tuned for next week. I will be posting a video every Monday, hopefully. I'm going to try my best to stay on track. We will see. I am a very busy person, so... Yes. Hopefully you like this one. If you have any suggestions on like different true crime topics you want me to cover, send them my way. And yes, I will see you next time. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and if you want to keep on watching me. And I will see you next week. Okay. Bye-bye.